Yeah, you're right. Welcome back. I was walking backwards there for a second because I need this. So you see that? See where that sun is? It's good that there's clouds in front of it and it's kind of bad. It's bad where it's at. It's good where it's at. It's all good. Somewhat bad. Yeah, you're right. It just, we don't have a lot of time. That's what's bad. We got maybe an hour and a half. We actually have all the time in the world to shoot fishing videos this afternoon, but we don't have all the time in the world to shoot this particular video. I'm here just for a quick sunset bite. We have very dirty water. It's been raining off and on, just enough to keep it kind of dirty up here. We're going to do the simple thing. We're going to act like we got lockjaw because technically we're still in the full moon, right? So this is just a 1 16th ounce shaky head. I'm making sure I'm text posed. June bug finesse worm. We've been here before, right? Most of us. Maybe you're new. This is just a drainage ditch. It has fish. Drains into a bayou, which is down there. I guarantee if this is dirty like this up here, it's extremely more dirty down there where it drains into. So we're standing over a culvert. I'm acting like everyone's new but I know a lot of you are not. I know that a lot of you know that this is a big culvert that goes underground, but it's surely to shrink as it goes back this way underneath the bike. But there's fish that love to go back there. Let's see if there's fish hanging out right here. We're just gonna drop this down. We're using a 10 pound. Oh, what's going on? Why, why are we not dropping? I think, there we go. A 10 pound fluorocarbon leader is what I'm using. Ah, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Something little picked me up right, right there. Despite this dirty water. Ah. 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 All right. Stop complaining, Mr. Hood, and catch that fish. That's two bites in a row. Ah, that was another one. Are, is that even bass hitting me? Maybe it's small bass. There we go. Ah! You little stinker. Yeah. Come on. Come on, let's get it done. What is going on here? Let me, let me fix this. All fixed. Oh, those clouds moved and that sun is on us, but it's all good. Ah! We're some hungry fish right here. It's just little dinks, right? Well, so far, but we know that there's more than just, ah, yeah, that was a, that was not a bass. I don't, I guess you didn't see that. That was a gill or a goggle eye. Junebug is a great color to go with here. Ah, there's just little things right there. Oh, I don't know what that was, but it took my finesse worm. Junebug's a great color. That finesse worm had caught a bunch of fish already anyway. It was kind of tore up. But yeah, there are some really good colors. And then there are colors that are good other places, but not here for this water quality. In some countries, other, you know, I was going to say other than this one, but I guess you knew that. In some countries, you'll hear a different idea about dirty water, but I think it might be less to do with water quality and more to do with water temperature and the species. I remember when I was researching drop shotting soft plastics and other things I came across videos out of Denmark or Sweden one of those what am I doing I always forget that I got a screw lock anyway it was a it's a well-known bait company right that these videos were put out by can't remember the name of it but 
they might be Danish. Anyway, they're in some Norse country, right? And I remember the guy in a video where they were drop shotting for yellow perch saying that because the water was dirty, they were using brighter colors. And there are some bright colors that will work in dirty water, but they don't work in all dirty water for all species. There are people who swear, even down here, swear by fishing a bait in dirty water that has a fluorescent orange tail. Now, I do something similar, but it's usually chartreuse, and it's, but it's fluorescent as well. So you could say that that is a bright color, but I will mix it with a dark body color and just have the tail be that way. And some of my friends that prefer the orange tail are doing something similar, right? So yes, if we, if we went to a chartreuse bait, that would work, but not always an all chartreuse bait. Sometimes you just need a little bit of chartreuse because all chartreuse would be too much. Let's see if, if we can get a hook up. Now I do have finesse worms with chartreuse tails on them and some other things. I just don't think it's very necessary. If this water was just a little cooler, wouldn't hurt. Sometimes dark body chartreuse tail works better in fall when you have colder water temps. It would probably work today. We may have burnt this spot. We might need to let it cool down. But we might just need to put that in a different spot from up here. Yeah, we're getting hit getting hit by little things still. They're very active. I remember that company had baits showing up in like Mystery Tackle Box or something. But I can't remember the name of that company. Here, got you. Ah! Same thing like last time, except for the little things. The little things, you feel a, a hit. But with the actual bass, they're picking up the bait and running with it. You see the line move before you feel anything. It is a very light jig head. It is only a 1 16th ounce. Which is really, really light. Look at this. Little gar right there. Capel. Small gars and Creole, I mean Cajun, is Capel. Not alligator gar. But I don't think Capel refers to a species. When I was looking it up, it said small lake gar was called a Capel. And I don't know what species that refers to. I do know that it, it's not referring to alligator gar because that has a different name in Cajun. So maybe they mean like spotted gar or short nose. Spotted gar, one of the most common ones here, right? Believe it or not, sometimes it seems more common than alligator gar. There are a lot of alligator gar here, but there's an absolute ton of spotted gar and short nose but a lot more spotted gar very common lots of action so far but a little humiliating because we can't get a hook up it's the case sometimes just we just got to get into the zone here we have plenty of time 
and the fish are playing. <laughs> but they're not playing nice. Would you like to see if there's another one up in there? I would. Sounds like we hit something besides the water. Kind of cast in blind. Sometimes there's too many vines a little further back hanging in, hanging down. And just slowly creep this along. When I pop it, comes up a little bit. Maybe I burnt it back there. Maybe I need to uh, let it be for a second. Oh, wow. We just repeated the same freaking scenario. Do a few casts for a cooling down period. And then we'll go back, see if we can get a monster from in there or just this general area. We've lost two nice bass in a row. Thought I had a good hook set on them. Ah, there's plenty of hits here, left and right. It's fire. Everything's on fire out here. Like a LA County Canyon. Fire. Wow, fire. Bastard. Is this the money shot? Is this the one that works out? I keep trying to spit it. There we go. Oh, I had to humiliate myself. How you doing? Were you the one playing tricks on me? Making me look like an idiot? It's all good. It's all good. I, I'm not mad at you. I'm not going to body slam you into the water. I will be cool about it and just slip you back off into this murky stuff. There you go. Thank you for playing. All right, that one got totally wasted. It is just way too messed up. Let's switch things up a little bit, but stick with the color that's working let's go for a more compact bait same company too we're gonna go with speed crawls by zoom June bug I think these will work just fine I hope right they work really good on shaky heads
Oh. Had another little bite from something that I don't think was a bass. Just trying to be super subtle with the vertical jigging. I might not be there. I might not be achieving the subtlety that I want. We'll slow it down a little bit. I think what we need to do is abandon the vertical jigging somewhat stay up here for a second but do a short crawl crawl the craw that short distance from out there where it plopped coming up the middle to the point where we're back to vertical jigging uh, we're getting attacked by little stuff again I hope I'm not making a mistake switching over to a more compact bait. We're not making a mistake at all. Hello. Are you one of the ones that was playing tricks? You and your buddy? Or are you the same one? This feels a little heavier. Probably pushing close to two pounds. Yeah, you're right. You want the gentle approach, just like I did with your friend? There you go. Ah, uh, thanks for getting me wet, buddy. Have a good one. Perfect, back in business. Text posed. Yeah, you're right, so do you think I burnt that? I think there's more? So there's a drop off right here. We're right in front of where the corrugated metal of the culvert ends, right? So it's where structure and cover come together. The cover being the vegetation on top, the structure being the overhang of the culvert under the un, its underwater structure. And whatever there is of the cement embankment, you know, what we're standing on. I believe this has a cement bottom. This ditch but it it only goes to there it ends down that way but it starts way down there this gets really really shallow when uh, as you go this up it this is as far as the cement section of this drainage ditch is concerned this is the deepest part okay something grabbed one of our tails and untext posed us we'll just drop in try to got to get it in the perfect place to where if we pick up a fish we're not getting wrapped around vegetation it may be that we've spooked it oh little dink was still there well yeah you're right come here buddy maybe you were that first dink that played games Nice. Oh, oh. Grace was not for you that time. I'm so sorry. In this moment today, in this session, here at this spot, this concrete drainage ditch, I am finding peace with myself and everything. But it's just in the moment, right? I'm catching fish. As soon as I leave here, that peace may get dashed may go out the window because of traffic or whatever or just people in general there's a lot 
of people around. This piece that I find when I'm fishing, I can find anywhere as long as I, as long as I can find a place to fish, I can find this peace of mind. And it's really cool in a lot of, a lot of ways to go all over the place, different parts of the country, dare say the world and find this piece. If it's a challenge, if there's a learning curve I have to get over, the piece I find can be greater because I had to challenge my mind. It's one of the things I like about bass fishing, but fishing in general, of course, not just bass fishing. I mean, look around me. This doesn't embody tranquility on the face of it. it. It is really not the most peaceful looking place, but you can find peace. Dare I say in the middle of the concrete jungle? Well, we're almost in the middle of a concrete drain and we're catching okay bass. They're not trophies but they're playing nicely. I mean, there's a lot of action. And, and technically we're still in the full moon, but we're probably gonna be faced with a shutdown on the bite here pretty soon because the moon is about to rise over the horizon. Oh, I didn't feel anything, but then I, it, it felt lighter than a 1 16th ounce jig and I thought I, I think something's with me but I reacted too late it's all good it's all good I'm not upset about missing fish or losing fish if that's all that happens sure that's all I have but that's not the case so let's do this one more time bang we're back in there no problems let's slow it down and just keep in mind that they're picking up and running with it. Running into the rod tip, right? So yes, I'm not going to feel it so much. I have to stay in contact. I have to know when there's a difference of tension one sixteenth ounce jig head does give you a bit of resistance as you're bringing it along. There. Oh, oh, it's a multi-species video. Look at that red ear. Holy smokes. Were you one of the stinkers messing up my... Oh. Grace was not for you either, but at least it was a clean slope that you skied down. Slightly like sandpaper. Oh, quite a bit like sandpaper, but yeah, you're right. Hook size on this is a 4 op right? It's an owner jig head. I like owner shaky heads. They are a little expensive. Owner is not the cheapest company, but they are a well trustworthy company. It's a Japanese company. I use a lot of owner products. Because they are pricey, they're not the most expensive, right? But they are pricey because of that. You don't like losing them, right? So you always gotta make sure you're tech exposed. Okay, so. Are we gonna get any kind of attention on this one? We might have to. Uh, uh, 
uh, that was probably a, something small. Look at that. Maybe that was a gar. Look what it did. What do you think? You think, you wanna see if we can catch a fish missing a claw? I bet it works, but probably also would be advisable to go ahead and replace that. Let's do in front of the culvert, do the drop off here. See if there's anything hanging out there. Go ahead, yeah, bah, 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 bah. See? I didn't react good enough there. Hey, look, I'm still text posed. In nature, you will come across crawfish many times that are missing a claw. So that's not the reason why I would advise maybe just going to a new one. It's about the action of the bait. Missing the claw impedes the action of this bait. This is not, not a live crawfish. If this was a live crawfish and it was missing a claw, Oh, look at that it's even tore up like it's m missing that one claw and then that claw is nibbled back this longer one here so we'll go ahead and drop it back in maybe we're doing this because i'm lazy and i don't want to walk up the hill We're going to get to a point where I'm going to want to because I want to keep catching fish and I have little time. We're doing that right now. We're going up the hill. This is a fairly fresh pack of speed crawls. Bought them sometime this year. Sometimes when your soft plastics get old, this also depends on how you store them, but they, they can get old and break really easy when you're fishing them. I am a person who firmly believes in leaving my soft plastics in the bag as long as the bag is a Ziploc bag. If they are sold in a bag that is not a Ziploc bag, I will put the bag that they're sold in inside a Ziploc bag. I know people who like to get all their soft plastics out of the bag and put them in a tackle box, right? I don't know why. Maybe it's because they like the how it presents to their eyes, but it's not always the best way to store them. And most of you probably know why. If you live in a place where it doesn't get as near as hot as it does here, maybe that you don't experience what I'm talking about. But when you take out soft plastics out of the package and store them in a container like this and it gets hot, well, you'll find that they melt. And over time they get dirty and they dry out. So we're just gonna go right back to the drop off in front of the culvert. They seem to be coming back and forth patrolling. I'm going to do it one more time and then start other locations and then come back to this. I haven't looked at the time, I'm just periodically looking up at the where the sun is. It's still above the trees. Okay, nothing there. We'll let it be for a second. This one's easy right here. 
Oh, if I could get it in there without getting it stuck on the vegetation. Let's try that again. That's a nice ambush point right along there. It's like behind, it's up over the drop off, you know, back behind the drop off, so it's shallower. But they hide in there. They're probably coming in front, come up in the column, and come up through there underneath this vegetation, ambushing stuff. Oh, ho, ho, sloppy. I bet a fair amount of people watching this video mostly buy their fishing stuff at Walmart. If you're just getting into bass fishing and you see the colors that I'm using oh, and you see it's by Zoom and you go to your local Walmart and they don't have, yeah, okay. That's fine. I'm not mad at you. You go to your local Walmart and they don't have this. They have a limited. So you might live in a place where you need a different color like uh, green pumpkin. Green pumpkin is a good color. But if you wanted to try watermelon red or June bug and they don't have it, speed crawls in this color or speed crawls at other. Go to another store that sells fishing stuff like Academy or Gander Mountain or something. Or Go to another store. Walmart doesn't always have the best selection of stuff. Depends on the Walmart too. I've been to Walmarts where they, they had a, a very generous amount of bass stuff. And I've been to Walmarts where I was like, oh, this is nice amount of bass stuff but nothing that i'm looking for and what i was looking for not uncommon zoom is a very common brand you can find it everywhere but sometimes you walk in your walmart and they have a lot of bass stuff that just doesn't work well in your area and you're like what the yeah it's just it's not a smart person making the order that's what that is was a perfect cast back there. I didn't ping pong off anything. But will I catch anything? The sun is behind the tree line now. Ah, had a bite from something other than a bass. That was a pretty aggressive bite. I wonder, yeah, my crawl bait looks fine. Yeah, you're right. I hope you caught something good here, but you left your dig head. Yeah, you're right. So, just lost everything. I hit a snag, lost everything including the fluorocarbon leader camera overheated believe it or not i was surprised too so we got a fresh battery we don't have a sun anymore it's behind the clouds it's about to be gone we're right here at sunset so let's get gone yeah you're right i found a lot of peace peace of mind and i always do there are times when i'm fishing and and it just doesn't happen it just it is like that at times. You're doing the thing that sets you right, that chills you out. And it just didn't work that time. You gotta try harder next time, I guess. Well, so I got there. But it doesn't mean everything around us is peaceful. We can get our mind right. And then all of a sudden, we walk into Babylon to buy some butter. 
and we feel like we need to go fishing after we pay for it because it costs too much or everybody had a shitty attitude sometimes when i find really good solid peace of mind when i'm fishing this is like i'm talking about meditation kind of am but i'm talking about fishing you can find a deep peaceful place in your mind when you're fishing sometimes it lasts a good while hopefully the peace of mind that i caught today will last me until the next session which is a few hours away until then thanks for watching liking sharing commenting subscribing that's really important i thank you so much for that and i also thank you so much for being a member of the channel if you're not and you want to check it out check it out a buck two buck three bucks something like that every month helps me keep doing what i do but if you don't that's cool too i'll tell you what just sharing hitting the like button being a subscriber is pretty dang cool helps out a lot more than you would know or more than you know trust me it really it really does i'm sure a lot of you do know how important it is it helps the channel keep going yeah you're right thank you so much and i will see you next time